Hello and welcome. We're going to continue our discussion talking about the portlet lifecycle, taking a look at portlet modes. Now in the Java standard, there are three different types of modes as we call them. These modes allow for us to have different points of views using these modes. So the three that come with the Java standard is the view mode, the edit mode, and the help mode. Each one has its own sort of specific use. We as developers can go against what the Java standard says they're used for, uh, but this is what it is. So the view mode is the standard mode that comes with all of our portlets. So this is the one mode that's set for us by default. This is the default mode or the default point of view. So we'll have a JSP that corresponds with the view mode. This is typically called the view.jsp. The edit mode's main functionality defined by the standard is to provide a point of view or perspective in order to configure the portlet itself. And then the help mode is, again, another perspective, another point of view to provide information for the end user in case they get stuck so that they can gather some information that we provide for them, assuming that we have these modes. So again, the view mode is the only mode that's required. Edit and help can be up to us as to whether or not our portlet even needs it. Now, LifeRay has a couple of modes as well that it has built in or integrated. We have the list here, right? And we can leverage those as we see fit. Now, each one of these modes in the Java standard has a method that corresponds with it. So in the behind the scenes, what ends up happening is the render method will then go into some logic to figure out which, which mode are we in. Once it figures out which mode we're in, it will then call a method that corresponds with it. So if we're in the view mode, do view. If we're in the edit, do edit. If we're in the help, do help. So this is done in the render method. We don't need to worry about it. So one example here of setting the portlet modes, we have our render URL. We have a parameter that allows us to set that specific mode. We can also do that over in the portlet class as well using the action response object, we can set the portlet mode to whatever mode we want. So we can do it in the JSP side or at the portlet class. Again, getting into some of the logistics of how this all works within the render method of generic portlet. Generic portlet is the Java implementation of the Java standard. So within generic portlets render method, we have a method called do dispatch. The do dispatch method is the one that's responsible for figuring out which portlet mode are we in. So here in the do dispatch, we have a couple of if else statements that are relevant for this conversation. If we're in the view mode, call do view. If we're in the edit and the help, call the relevant method that follows it. One thing that's interesting about this is if we're following the Java standard and we're following this pattern here, the do edit and the do help are not implemented for us. In order to have these methods even work, we ourselves have to implement them. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do decide uh, to implement these other modes. So we have the portlet lifecycle. We talked about those phases. We've talked about the portlet modes, view, edit, help, and a couple of life rate custom ones. Now we're going to be talking about window states. Again, we briefly talked about window states as the way that the portlets are being displayed. So there are three that comes with the Java standard. We have the normal. This is what happens when we place a portlet on the page. It by default sets the portlet to normal. We have maximized. This is where the portlet takes up the whole page and then minimize where it only shows a title bar for the portlet. So those are the three window states that comes with the Java standard. Again, we have two different ways in which we can set them. We can set them at the JSP side, or we can set them within the portlet class, right? So that wraps it up for this portion of how portlets work. In the next section, we're going to be talking about interportlet communication. So until then, I will see you in the next video.